the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You're very welcome. And the next question is, what has changed? Here I am, disgusting you with my crude presence. Okay, my corporeal reality. Here I am in front of you, visually. Our first visual presentation. I want to thank everyone at Immaculata Productions, uh, an organisation which operates on one wing and many prayers and, and, and has managed to make this happen. What are we going to do with this? I'm thinking a bit of down-home, traditional, thinking man's, reflecting woman's, Theological fast food. I'm thinking theological McNuggets. Okay, we're going to start by offering you 10, 15 minute little, little presentations, little offerings, little something just to whet your appetite. Something you might get something out of on the road. Look, will you say a prayer for us? Because we're probably going to make a hash of this. I don't know any other way to do anything worth a damn. You start by making a hash of it. If you don't believe in God, will you whisper into the void? <laughs> okay. You know, think good things, whatever. Whatever stage you're at, will you just say one for us that this works out? And maybe, you know, you say a little prayer with me, just that we, we, we manage to do something beautiful for God. We pray to Our Lady because, you know, she, she'll, always, she'll always stick by us. Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. I'm coming to you courtesy, as I said, of Immaculata Productions, a cash-strapped, half-starved crowd of individuals who would be so grateful if you would hit that subscribe button. Uh, with a certain elegant uh, sort of uh, nonchalance and uh, give us the old kiss of life there. Find us on Patreon and send vast amounts of money uh, through to keep us in the style to which we're not accustomed. Seriously, we're going to need a bit of help if you can do anything for us. This first one, I don't want to start it on a bad note, but as we did before, we're really, we're really as well to call it, aren't we? We're as well to name this. So we'll start our video productions by just taking a look again at where we are in the church. And I would ask you to pray for the priesthood. Because um, I, I think pretty much that's, that's the, uh, it's probably the crux of where our problems lie. Um, I'm very sorry to say that. I'm almost 30 years a priest, and I have absolutely no regrets. I've often said this, my only regret is not having done it better. But we're not in great shape. We... I, I, I think if the priesthood could get its act together, I'm not saying the big crowds would come back. I'm not even saying I want the big crowds to come back. I don't want people to come back if they don't believe or want to be there. I'm saying that the church could get itself ready for functioning, for announcing the kingdom in this very new world, this new civilization that technology has created. And it is without precedent in history. And I think we're floundering. And I think the core of the floundering is in the priesthood. Brother priest may be very hurt to hear me say that. It's no reflection on individuals. It's no reflection on my superiors. It's no reflection on my, my juniors. It's, I'm not picking on people. But there is a problem. Where does it lie? I, I don't think this is rocket science, you know, which is just as well because I wouldn't be very good at it. I don't think this is rocket science. I mean, uh, even somebody with my bog standard intellect can get his head around this. We're not sufficiently men of prayer. We're not holy enough. 
I've tried a number of apostolates and I've really put work into them and I've watched them one by one. I wouldn't say fail, but just not succeed, which is worse. I mean, failure is decent. You fail, you fail. You fail, you know where you are. And you, you, you can start planning to get back. But where you just sort of, I don't know, lie croaking in the ditch, it's not so good. Why? I came to the conclusion that I just wasn't a good enough priest. That I wasn't holy enough. That I wasn't praying enough. That I wasn't fasting enough. That I wasn't doing enough penance. That I just wasn't... I wasn't uh, the kind of material that God, God can work with. Now, you could say back to me, that's practically blasphemy. God is omnipotent. He's omniscient. He can do everything. God chooses freely to work with human material. And human material is not easy material to work. It's deeply flawed. I suppose, look, this is so abstract that it's going to, you may well say back to me, you're saying, you're saying nothing really. We need a new reformation. Now, I want the, the trad cats, you know, to, to basically not spit their coffee across the kitchen table, okay? There's no need to, there's no need to get in, to panic. What do I mean by new reformation? Because I don't count the, what's called the counter-reformation as a counter-reformation. I call it the Catholic Reformation, the Catholic, the great Catholic renewal. To our great shame, it took, it took the disaster that I believe the disaster of the Reformation to cause the Catholic Reformation. But it came, and it produced some of the greatest saints and the greatest religious orders we have ever seen. It was a glorious period in the history of the Church. The work of the Spirit, the Spirit ran on a rampage through the Church. Now we need that again. We need another Catholic Reformation. And that reformation has to come first and foremost in the priesthood. I've heard priests worry about, you, you know, we, we can't seem to stimulate leadership among the laity. You're the leader. A priest is ordained to lead the church in a given area. That's what the bishop has deputed you to do. That's what you're there for. That's what he's counting on you to do. Let people run the world which is quite enough for them to, to be worried about. We're supposed to lead the church. We, we have to stop dodging the knife. What do I mean by that? I mean that a priest is a human sacrifice in a sense every leader is, but none more than the spiritual leader. And in that sense, he is a man apart and there's nothing to be done about that. He is a man who is being sacrificed for the greater good of everyone. He shares in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. He must not dodge the knife. He must not dodge the nails. He must not dodge the cross. I don't see any way around this. I really don't see any way around it. Um, my head caves in at the thought of it. I've always found prayer difficult. I'm afraid of God. I think you probably should be a bit afraid of him. Maybe not quite as afraid of him as, 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 as I was anyway, and to an extent still am. I have a whole load of demons I'm still dealing with, baggage, I, human baggage I have to carry. It's much easier to just shut the door on that and just keep going. Just run on it. You know, you know the way you run on, 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 on not even a half tank. You're running, you're running on the red. You're just running on the red. And, and some people say they feel sometimes as if they're running on empty. I, I really could do without this, you know. As, as I heard one <laughs> devout Catholic say resignedly at, at the latest call, I, 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 think it was by the, I think it was by Pope Benedict um, several years ago, but where he was calling for uh, a renewal of penance or something like that, she went, oh God, do I really need this in my life? <laughs> <laughs> and while on, on, on the one hand that sounds outrageous, on the other hand, I, I knew where she was coming from. Sometimes you just, you can't handle it. Uh, I'm afraid we're going to have to handle it. 
And so really that's what, all I want to say in this first video presentation is that I'm coming before you as a bad priest. Okay, I don't even like that phrase, good priest, because there aren't any good priests. There are only grades of failure. A priest is an icon of Jesus Christ. A priest is Alter Christus. Christ is the only perfect man who has ever lived. How do you do that without making a pig's breakfast of it? You don't. Grace builds on nature. You depend on grace to finish it. It will be a pig's breakfast. But a pig's breakfast is something. It's something. And so I'm coming before you in that sense. I'm coming before you defeated. I'm coming before you a failure. I'm coming before you a broken. But I'm coming before you still a priest. Still a priest. And I'm calling on all priests in this for first episode. Haul yourself out of the ditch. Give a last cackle, a last cracked croak of triumph. Get yourself ready for the last battle, okay? We'll meet this on our feet. Get the rusty armor on, get on the nag, okay? And head down the road for the fight. We're going to make a fight of it. This is everything. This civilization cannot be written off. The gospel must be preached to it. You hear me? It must be done. It doesn't have to be pretty. Let's just get on with it. God bless you. God keep you. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.